I was very happy to meet Victor Pivarov today for the first time. We lunched together and he gave me the catalogue he's just published with his philosopher friend Olga, who's Russian, who lives in Prague. Suddenly I realized that behind these ostensibly slight drawings, uh, which are full nonetheless of images of memory, memories of childhood, memories of love, memories even behind me of erotic encounters, possibly relating to his move to Prague in the 70s. Behind all that, there is a great European humanist first in the philosophical tradition going from Plato through the 17th century to today, and one also very familiar with contemporary Russian philosophers, such as Maradashvili. All these literary and philosophical references hide behind the work of the great Moscow conceptualists. It's a great privilege for the Pushkin House in London to be able to premiere the work of Victor today. It's uh, a movement which is uh, arousing more and more international interest. It's becoming more and more known. And yet the works behind me and the works upstairs show that they're still very secret, intimate works that contain the huge story of the Soviet Union and its collapse on the one hand, and on the other, um, individual subjective stories of growing up, of loss, of exile, of happiness, of memory. Uh, these are wonderful works by an artist in his maturity that we are enjoying in London today for the first time. How long have you known him? And uh, could you tell us something about your friendship, what it's about, and your personal take on him as an artist? Our, our friendship is instantaneous. We lunched today. It's the first time I saw him. But I read this very moving correspondence with uh, Olga, his Russian friend, which, as he says, was always designed to be published at one stage. It's a long email correspondence. And yet Yet it is unashamedly intellectual, it's about ideas, it's an interchange between an older artist and a younger philosophy teacher and translator. Um, and it is full of both questioning, looking towards the future and even looking towards death, and um, um, a delectation about European heritage, which from the point of view of the contemporary art world is rather unfashionable but actually which situates an artist of his generation, his stature, and his own individual life story. Your interest in Russian art, how does he feature in it? What's his position in your overall take on Russian art? I began studying Russian art a very, very long time ago, and I went to Moscow first a very long time ago. Uh, I went back to work in the Lenin Library in the 90s, but at that time I was unaware of contemporary art developments. I was working on the material from the 1930s and the 1940s. So my engagement with Moscow conceptualism really started in 2005. I was actually invited by the French government with Catherine David, the curator, and Catherine Perret, a French philosopher. We were like the three graces, and the French government arranged for us to meet many, many people in Moscow. Um, I'd also worked at the Pompidou Center at the time of the big uh, Paris-Moscow exhibition, and I was astonished when I discovered the periodical AIA, the periodical with Boris Groys's first uh, article about Moscow romantic conceptualism, that it dated from those years, and yet it seemed to have sunk without trace in Paris, the very place of its production. So now I'm very privileged in as much as as a teacher I'm supervising doctoral work by people fluent in Russian who are trying to bring that story, um, for, uh, working with the archives, working with the artists, back into the world. So it's a long and layered story. Victor himself likes talking about the different layers behind every painting. My own story is quite layered, but it's a, a story that develops every day, and today was the day I met Victor um, himself. Victor, his wife Milena, and I encountered the thought of Olga as well in this great philosophical exchange. Thank you very much.